All right, guys, welcome back to the relegation battle. Um, well, I guess there's only one real place to start. Jack, that is at Manchester United. Um, you know, before the weekend, it did look like Ole was not safe, but reasonably, you know, comfortable in the job. But 4-1 defeat to Watford has changed everything. Ole has been sacked now. Um, Michael Craig's in charge. So what are the initial thoughts on that? Um, well, as soon as the, you know, I mean, it should have happened Leicester after Leicester, but it definitely should have happened after Liverpool. Um and then the worst, the best time to do it was the international break. We could have actually got a proper manager in, but you know they gave him the Watford game, and the Watford game was just a disaster. Four um, one, he was never going to survive that. You know, that even though he shouldn't have, there was a slight chance we he might have survived a one 0 loss, but a four one loss, no, he's never going to um, survive that. So he needed to go. You know, I hoped he was the person to take us to that next level, but obviously he wasn't, so he needed to go. But the way the club has done it, I think it's been awful. The not it's Oli's the manager, but he's so, said so many times he has, he doesn't coach the team. So why are the coaches still there? You know, I understand you got to have someone to, but Carrick, McKenna, Phelan, they all should have gone with him. Mm-hmm. They shouldn't be there, and we should have had an actual plan in place of right. If if the, if this goes um, sideways, we have to get this manager in with his coaching staff. But it's like they didn't know what was they didn't expect. To sack Oli, but they had to after that performance. So it's like, you know what, we'll just sack Oli, but we'll keep his coaching staff. So um, he needs to go, he did. But I think if you're going to have, depending how long Carrick's in there for, you know, I'm guess I, I'm sure we'll talk about it, but obviously the Pochettino links, um, an interim manager link, you know, if we don't get one and Carrick stays for longer, maybe let's just say Carrick's to the end of the season, you might as well just kept Oli. Because yeah. in my opinion, I'm not much going to change. You know, you might get a, um, a performance today, but that'll be from the players, not from the manager, because in the press conference, uh, he said, me and Oli, working three years closely, we share the same beliefs and stuff like that. So we're not, we're not going to see much difference. You might see better performances from the players, but I just think the whole lot should have gone. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we raised a good point there. You know, international break just gone. Um Villa, you know, they got Jared in that time. Uh, Norwich got Dean Smith in that time. Both teams actually winning last weekend as well. But, you know, like you said, I'm not sure how much difference there is going to be between Carrick and Ole. Um, or as I think Fabrizio said that there will be a couple of teams tonight at Big will probably start. But um, you've got, you got Villarreal tonight, who are, you know, joint point uh, level points with you going to the last two Champions League games. You've got Chelsea in the weekend and yeah. Arsenal midweek next week. Three big games. Maybe the Chelsea game would have been all right off anyway, but especially Arsenal, considering where both teams are in the table, how close they are. You know, these are three big games for you guys. And with Carrick in charge, you know, how confident are you going to these games? You, you say a good point. There are three big games, but also three massive away games. None of them mm-hmm. are at home. So we're not going to have, you know, if this... Um, if this was game was at home or the Chelsea game was at home, I reckon the atmosphere would actually be very good. But away, you know, we're still going to... Our away fans are brilliant, but there's still only a certain amount in the stadium. So these three points are massive. Um, you know, today, Carrick's had one training session yesterday. You're not going to be able to change anything really in one training session. So tonight, it's away from home. Like you said, we're on the same points. A win guarantees us... from. Um, I guarantees us a qualification. A draw pretty much does. I know we lost the first game, but the last game for us is young boys at home. Like we can't use that, lose that. Like I just can't see that happening. So a draw, a draw would see us through as well. Um, but a win would um, automatically um, take us there. But the Chelsea game, we were saying we were talking. Um, if, we're, if a Michael Carrick team, Chelsea should be battering them. You know, they should be battering a Oli team, but. A character, you know, I, you can't expect anything other than a loss there, you know. So, and then the Arsenal game, you know, yeah, they you did get beat comfortably by Liverpool. Yeah, you could say they're an e- easy team, but you went on a ten game on beaten run. You know, I think eight of those are in the in the yeah, Prem. Yeah. So, so you got a decent run there, but again, away we do struggle against um, Arsenal. Oh yeah, we are. Yeah, you're right. We are we are at home actually. Um, so forget the three big away games, but um, the Arsenal game is still 
struggle against Arteta. Oli did. I know he's not there, but like I said, I'm not going to expect changes from Carrick, um, Oli to Carrick. So tonight, um, a draw, I mean, not perfect, the perfect to win, but a draw is decent because it's away from home and it takes us into a strong position. And then the Chelsea game, I can't see anything other than a Chelsea loss. Uh, <laughs> Chelsea loss. Um, a Man United loss and a Chelsea win. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> how, how good how, they have been good this season. So the Arsenal games where you know we might even get a manager before them, we will have to wait and see. But at the moment, I can't see us getting one before Chelsea. So I expect to lose Chelsea and have to see against Arsenal. I um in United statement on the second they said at the end they expect an interim manager for the rest of the season. Obviously, that could still change if they put change his mind, but. You know, they did 12 games into the league. That's like a third of the way through. There's still so much of the season to go now. You know, is it a bit stupid to almost call the season off, especially with the team that United got? Um, I wouldn't say it's stupid because I think they need to they need to get this appointment right. Obviously, with Oli. Um, obviously, when he first came in, he started off as an interim, but obviously he went on that good run at the start and beat um, PSG and obviously Rio went on a mad one and all that stuff. But um, so, yeah, I think what they're trying to do is they need to, they're trying to obviously get the right, make sure it's the right appointment so they don't want to rush it and just go with anyone random and then obviously the same thing happens because they've got a good team. Their team's capable of challenging. They just obviously, they need the right manager. So obviously hope, well, obviously not for, not for us, but hopefully for United, they can, they can get someone like a Pochettino in. So I think that's what they're trying to do. But who knows? So, yeah, they've got to get that, make sure it's the right appointment and not rush it. Jack, would you be happy with Poch? Yeah, I mean, I'd be, I'd be happy with anyone, anyone's in my bed already. But, yeah, if you were to, um, if you were said to me, Poch now, I'd happily take it. I think, um yeah, he still hasn't won anything major, you know. He has won the um, uh, two cups, I think, for PSG. And if he stays, he's going to win the league this year. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'm said taking, I think, I like the way he he likes his team to play. You know, and he's also in the past be, been linked and had good quotes on the players we have at the moment. So, I think he could utilise our squad well. I think he improves players as well. So, he's a very good coach as well. Um, but for me, I'm, my number one target is Ten Hag. So I wouldn't like I would if it was Poch now, I'd take it. But if we had to, if we couldn't get Poch now and we had to wait till the summer, then it would be Ten Hag over Poch in the summer. If you want him summer. over Poch, God. say that again. How how come you want him over Poch? When I some when I, I don't watch them often, can't lie. But when I do watch um, Ajax, you can see they're just so well coached. You know, they know they're pressing. They're and you know I don't I don't want to. Well, Oli, well, he wasn't really possession. He was just like a counter attacker. I don't. I want the ball. I want yeah, my yeah, team yeah. to control the ball because we got such good ball players. So yeah. the thing with um, Ten Hag, you know, he presses well. Very good in transition, yeah. and he can he dominates the ball. You can see when you watch Ajax the patterns of play here and there. So that's why Ten Hag will be my number one. But him, can't, I can't see happening until the summer. So I'd hundred percent, hundred percent take Poch now, who's my number two. But if we couldn't get a manager till the summer, it would be Ten Hag. Can you see him? Okay, yeah, fair enough. If you wait for the summer, say I have Carrick in charge for the rest of the season, would you be worried? You know, if you don't get Europe that you know, these managers might think second, you know, second thoughts about this. Yeah, if we can't get a manager until summer, we can't keep Carrick. We've got to go and get interim. What yeah. my ideal would be, go and get um, Ragnik yeah. for interim. Um, again, because he, he plays high-intensity, getting and press football. So it would also give the players a bit of... Um, just a bit of knowledge how maybe next season going to go if we did get Ten Hag, but my would be get Ragnik interim, then going to get Ten Hag in the summer. Yeah, I don't want to see Carrick until the end of the season, God, no. Yeah. Well, 
we'll mention more positive things. And Chelsea are doing very well tonight. Uh, another solid display on the weekend. More defenders scoring goals. Um, three points clear at the top right now. But you've got a big game tonight against Juventus. Um, could really decide who finishes top of the table. Um, would you want to see sort of Lukaku maybe get a few minutes tonight as well? But if not, what would you, you know, how would you start the game for Chelsea? Um, uh, well, Havertz is injured, so I think um, my, my guess is Vern is going to come in to start off with because he's been back in training. He came back in training in the last week of the international break, so I think he'll probably start up top. And then uh, Lukaku, he trained, I think he's in full training yesterday, so he might get a few minutes off the bench, um, which would be good for us because I want him to play on Sunday. <laughs> he just may bully the end off a little bit. But um, yeah, uh, the Leicester game was it, was, it was good, but we could we should have scored. It could have been six or seven. Like obviously, there was three offside goals, which were offside. Chilwell should have scored in like the third minute. But um, yeah, Leicester were terrible. The attackers are starting to look a little bit better, apart from Havertz. He's starting to, starting to get under my skin a little bit. Now I'm starting to lose patience. But, um, but yeah, it was a good performance. Um, the defence, again, just the, whoever steps in there, whether it's... Chalabar over Silva, Christensen, obviously really good starts every game. But um whoever steps in there, they just they just fit fit straight in. Like we've got a, a brilliant system there. Um I mean, Kante. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's incredible. Um for me, best midfielder in the world. I don't care what anyone says. Um and yeah, like it, it's good, but obviously so far. I'm waiting until we play the big boys, like wait until we play Liverpool again. So United on Sunday, that's going to be a test for us. Like even though it is Carrick, it's still there still might be some sort of a bounce. You never know. Um, we should still be beating them. I'm not going to make any excuses, but yeah, it's got, I'm not. I'm not getting my hopes up yet. It's still only three points. So yeah, I mean, it's still you know, it's still Manchester United. You can't. The players yeah. still there. Whether I think Maguire is still spent, suspended for that, so. That will always be another bit of a downgrade for United, or maybe upgrade to it, depending on how you look at it. But you know, is Varane think... still out? Yeah, yeah, yes. So you'll be playing against Lindelof and Bailly. So Bailly's not bad, though, man. <laughs> he's, he's, no, he's not. But Lindelof just going to get bullied if Lukaku plays. Yeah. United fullbacks aren't doing fantastic right now, if we're being honest. But um, it's definitely something more Luke Shaw. I do think Wamba yeah. is actually having an underrated season. I do yeah. think because Luke Shaw's playing bad, people are saying both fullbacks are playing bad. Sometimes, yeah, he had, had a bad he has had a bad game, but I think Wamba Sack has actually been decent this season. I think it's been Luke Shaw and Harry Maguire mainly who's been awful. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. Um, well, do you feel Arsenal's defending wasn't much better this weekend? Uh, four and a half defeat oh, at Anfield. Oh, my goodness. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, that, that was not I, an easy watch, man. Um, I, had, I, just, I had a little bit of hope that you might do as a favour. and then uh, It's me. So did I for the first mate. half an hour. Um, Rams there was, without him, that would have been like a 7-8-0 yeah. scoreline because he was pulling off some amazing saves. Um, but... It's the same old every time at Anfield. We start, we normally start all right, but then as soon as one goal goes in, we just collapse. Um, it's like passing out the back. Yeah. Awful. Yeah, it just took too long to pass out the back. I mean, yeah, Liverpool's press was very good. But the thing is, even when we go long, they just get the second ball every time. Like Fabinho and Thiago, when, they, when those two play together, they're so good. Um, and it's been a bit unlike Liverpool that most of the time one or the other has been injured for them. But um, mm. yeah, they're just a level was above. Then second half, I think, are sort of not a maturity, but um, inexperienced sort of showed a bit. I mean, Nuno Tavares just oh, an absolute goodness. stinker. That That's like, uh, that pass right. is terrible. And then Jota just embarrassed us even more with the actual goal itself. <laughs> Sending Ben White to the shops and dropping Ramsdale as well. But then, yeah, it couldn't really get the attack going that much. Not ideal, but you know, even though it is Leo, but like I was expecting, uh, you know, I would have been very happy with the draw there, but 4 0 yeah. still, you know, 
a bit. Yeah, I think the other results helped you a lot as well. Yeah, we got a bit lucky with United losing and West Ham losing, but always at the same time, that means Wolves and Spurs are now also a point behind us. So it's not ideal at all. But uh, Did you see that game as a free hit? Yeah. Well, only after the United result, to be, I mean, West Ham result, to be fair. Um, again, it's a free hit, but not a 4-0 one, you know. Um, yeah. I, I did want to see a bit more. We didn't really create, okay, I think, two good chances in that game. Alisson made some like two good saves, to be fair. But, um, it was a free hit, but I wanted to be a free hit in the sense of us actually going at them a bit more and, you know, taking a few more risks. I know that maybe would have led to more goals, but it was still a bit disappointing to see from us not be negative, but because... I think if you actually went at Liverpool, you might have actually got a bit of joy. That's how most teams have got joy against yeah. them this season. Like, look at Brentford, when they actually went at them instead of just being negative, they, yep. they got a point of them. It feels weird to say it because Liverpool, I think, are different. You know, when, when smaller teams go at them, they can't handle it. But when bigger teams go at them, they just rip them apart. Yeah. You know, when yeah. Arsenal they didn't try and sit in, Arsenal tried to press a little bit, they tried to play out, but Liverpool's press was just... But you see Bright and Brentford playing now. Mate, I, think, I think that little, um, that little riffraff between Klopp and Arteta, I think that motivated them a little bit. Yeah, yeah the crowd got... <laughs> that's because I had... I've seen um, some interviews from Arsenal fans that went there, obviously, for like a fan camp sort of kind of thing. And they were yeah. saying the atmosphere for Liverpool fans weren't great in half, like the first half. But since, since um, well, after the spat Bruce. between Arteta and Klopp, then it just rose and the players um, responded. And that's probably why Liverpool did what they did. Yeah. I can't. Mane is really mad in that game with some of the fouls, you know. I can't lie. Like, he should have got a yellow card way earlier in that game. I mean, the actual foul itself for the Tommy Asu one, I don't think was that bad. But in terms of actual fouls, he did do quite a few. But, you know, obviously, like you say, we're 10 games I've been before that. I don't think all the momentum has gone back probably because it was Liverpool. If it was another, if it was Man United vs. 4 I think it would have been a lot worse because of Liverpool. I don't think any, anyone, no one's really expecting you to do much anyway. Because yeah. like, if you look at, like, before the season started, everyone, they were dead set on the top four being. City, Liverpool, Chelsea, United in whatever order. But obviously the United United's um early season forms obviously opened it up a little bit for teams like Arsenal and West Ham. So you're doing what you need. Like no one expected you to beat Liverpool anyway. So yeah. it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, I think what gets us top six or even top four potentially is winning the games that or this thing on beating the ten games that we did beforehand against yeah. the yeah. non City, Liverpool, Chelsea teams. Um make sure we keep getting points in that like you know, if we can get three points with Newcastle at home this week, I know they might have a little bounce as well. They've got a good draw against Brentford. But, you know, if we get three points there and Chelsea, you know, be United as most people expect with that, that's six points ahead of United going into that game. So they're not, they're not exactly a free hit, but it does give us a little bit more breathing room and maybe a bit more freedom going into that game rather than thinking, all right, let's just get a draw here. We, you know, we could go at them a little bit more. So, I'm not as dejected as I think other Arsenal fans are who a bit, I think took a bit more from the game than we probably should have. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm still confident going into uh, December, really. Um, so we've got Tottenham, Conte's second game in charge. Um, ended a 2-1 win against Leeds. Who is it? Lucas Moura, I want to say. No, it was Hoyberg and Reglan with the goals. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Was it Jack Harrison? Very good assist with that uh, for the Leeds goal. I think not nagging Emerson. Daniel James. James. <laughs> oh, yes, Dan James gave the goal there, but still not enough for Leeds. Um, Norwich, like I mentioned earlier, got Lee Smith in charge now. Got a good win over Southampton. Norwich actually ninety thousand. Newcastle are bottom of the table with six points. So it's, it's looking a bit sticky for them, but we'll see how Eddie how he does. Obviously. He wasn't actually on the touchline for that game because he had COVID, yeah. I believe. So um, that's going to be interesting to see how much he can be changed around. Um, Burnley with another 3 3 draw against Palace, I believe. Um, I really hope they go down, man. Uh, I'm sick of oh, it. I'm, I'm sick of that same. team, man. They just don't do anything. They're just there. 
and I'm, just, uh, I'm sick of them. But yeah, you know, not no good result for Palace, but not a terrible one. Three three. Um, Benteke is still in the goals, which is pretty important for them. You know, to get him playing more consistently with the goals and have yeah. Edouard and Ayu as you know options there as well to help Zaha. Then you know Vieira has got a good set team there, especially the way Gallagher is coming back as well. Yeah, Eze is coming back. Gallagher is on unbelievable form right now. Um, <laughs> did well for England as well. I feel like he got a goal, yeah. or is just I think it was just the debut for him. Yeah, but, yeah just uh, debut. I think he got an assist. Yeah, Smith Rowe got a goal. Yeah, but yeah. Um, other than that, you know, Wolves beating West Ham one 0 as we obviously mentioned West Ham dropping points, but. Wolves into six now, so another team in that little sort of scrap brightness still there. So a lot to still play for in the Prem. But one thing I want to mention is Leicester. Um, not the start that we've seen for them in the last two seasons. Um, they're 12th right now on 15 points. Um, obviously losing to Chelsea uh, this week, Le- uh, drawing to Leeds the week before, then losing to Arsenal before that. Jack Rogers is one of the managers who are linked with that United job before Ole got sacked. But just, you know, ignoring that for a second, you know, what's, what do you think is going wrong at Leicester right now? You know what, it's, it's actually hard to tell because it's not like they've got anyone missing. They've had the same, I know, I do think they still would have lost to Chelsea, but I do think that they were a massive disadvantage because they were, do, they were missing their best player, Yuri Tielemans. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but, He's been there the other games as well, so it's not just he's been missing for a while. When I just watched, when I watched, they're not clicking this year. You know, um, Dak has come in and done well, but he's not starting games. Yeah, you know, he's done well when he's coming on. He's not getting a chance to start. Vardy keeps starting, and yeah, Vardy's done well over the past couple of years, but this year doesn't seem like. I know he scored a few at the start of the season, but they just drowned out. You know, it just. Maybe switch up the team, team, get a bit of freshness. Um, there's no like creativity in that team. I know it sounds weird, but obviously James Madison doesn't start. He's on the bench. Um, he came on at half time, I think it was against yeah, Chelsea. Um, but yeah, they're just not clicking. They're just having a poor season. I, I can't get my finger on it. Yeah, I agree with you in the sense that I feel like Vardy's getting too many minutes. I know, like, I know he's sort of proven goal scorer in the Prem and he's done well for Leicester but when you've got Dak and Ian Acho playing the way they have been over the last few months I do think it's, start, it's time to start sort of integrating them getting them more minutes mm-hmm. and slowly integrating Vardy out you know they can't keep relying on Vardy I know I know he's doing well for his age but eventually he is going to catch up um, and Dak has you know, Dak has scored four goals in the Europa League game not too exactly. long ago exactly Mm. The potential is that he scored. He scored against United as well, didn't he? And yeah, he, he scored the and, last uh, goal. Him and Ian Acho have been forming a good partnership when they play together. So maybe it's that. Um, yeah, Harvey Barnes is looking decent. To be fair, coming back mm, from injury, yeah, yeah. I, do like, a, I do like him. Yeah, he's still a big boost, but I feel like he's still more of a finisher than he is a creator. Like what, like you're saying, you know, yeah. without Tielemans. Then you know, the midfield's still good, but he is such an important player in terms of transition yeah. as well. So it's interesting to see how Leicester do. Um, I'm not sure Rogers would be the right person to go for for United. I think his head's been turned. I don't know. I don't know what it is because there was talk before about um, him going to City when Pep goes, and then obviously those United rumors. I think I think his head's been turned. I think that's one of them, and then I think. Everyone, everyone around him like last season just strengthened. Like even like West Ham, well, West Ham, they've got better. Um, obviously, Chelsea, they were neck and neck with us last season, but obviously we've we've gone up a level. Um, so yeah, I think everyone's just strengthened around them. I don't think they really strengthened like that. They haven't really fresh things up. Like Vardy's still starting. I think right now he's just starting because of who he is. Like yeah, I know he scored a few goals, but I think he is just starting because of who he is. Like, like you said already. Dakar, um, Ian actually had a great end to last season as well. So I think maybe they need to freshen things up. But yeah, and obviously, probably a lot of the players in there, they've like Tillemans, he's been linked with a move away. Uh, Madison's been linked with moves away in the past as well. So maybe 
maybe it's just that cycle's just coming to an end or something. Potentially, but like I said, it's 12 games and there's still a lot that can change, yeah, yeah. but you'd much rather have a good start compared to um, good start uh, average ending, I think, compared to an average start because it just means you've got more to do later in the season. Um, what was this? Direct What's contact? this? Ernesto Valverde. Apparently, you know, I'd have a contact with him. Um, inter- interesting choice there. Um, is, that what they, is, that what, is that what they need? <laughs> it's interesting. It just looked like then... It all, it all depends on what kind of football the manager wants to play. So. Yeah. But it was, also looked like maybe United are moving a bit away from the interim option for the rest of the season, maybe going for a more permanent thing, potentially, maybe, maybe with our it would be a season-long thing, but interesting developments, probably get more by next week on how that goes. Um, yeah, I was at City 1-3-0 against Everton. Uh, Rodgers scoring a very good goal in that game. Um, so, well. oh, yeah, Cancelo with an unbelievable assist um, outside the boot. Um, then what else we got? We had Bayern lost to Augsburg 2-1. Um, Inter beat Napoli 3-2, a good game there. Um, Fiorentina beat East Milan, but I could shit a couple goals in that. Um, Xavi won his first game against Espanyol, 1-0. Uh, Depay scoring in that. A lot of the youngsters sort of making their surprise debuts to him, a lot of teenagers playing there. Um, I think they play Benfica today in Champions League. If they win that, I believe they are through to the next round but probably won't finish above Bayern in terms of um, topping the table. Um, Real Madrid go very well in La Liga. Um, Vinicius has really improved this season like, in terms of end product and, you know, helping up in Zemra a lot in that sense as well. Uh, but yeah, I think, oh, PSG won as well. Messi finally got his first league goal, pretty good goal as well outside the box. Um <coughs> That was probably the best game in terms of how Mbappe and Neymar Messi have clicked as a front three. Boys, the um, Man City this week will be the test for them. Mm. I know they won the first time. Porsche's right, in but... Manchester. Yeah. Could mm, be meeting yeah. United board for the game. Um, maybe, maybe. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the first thing that they beat them, I want to say 2 0 the first time round, it wasn't really that convincing. I still think City was a better yeah. team in that game. So, I think we are in very good form at the moment. So we'll see how all that goes. Um, Champions League, obviously Europa League, uh, Leicester and West Ham still doing their bit in that. Um, but yeah, um, anything you guys want to add? This delayed offside thing, it needs to go because I celebrated three goals for no reason. <laughs> and also, yeah, one <laughs> and one day it's going to lead to a serious injury, Harry, because yeah. there's no need. <clears throat> like, players like... 10 yards offside and then they just let the whole thing just go out for no reason. Yeah. It is. Especially when it's so obvious. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like... So I even celebrated... I, I celebrated Arsenal's goal the other day and I knew it was offside. I think even and, Batman um, celebrated that. I'm like, sure he knew he was offside. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's stupid. Like, yeah, I feel like they do take a piss with that a little bit. Like, sometimes, like, if we can tell it's, like, clearly offside from... From our TVs, they, then they, can. they can if they're standing in line with the defender. Surely, like I understand, sometimes they want to be a bit more hesitant. But when he's like five yards clear, I mean, just just put up the flag. Like the flag. Yeah, yeah, it, it's not necessary, but um, yeah. So that is it for this week. Um, make sure to you like, subscribe, comment, maybe what anything you want to talk to us about and or us to talk about, and then yeah, have a nice.